Okay, so if you're just tuning in, we're discussing the role of storytelling in nation building. Like, I'm so blown away. Um, I knew this was going to be a great conversation, but it's even greater than I thought. Um, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Wish Africa one with the hashtag we show, or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to the very eight one eight zero three eight four six six three. I don't even know that I want to check the WhatsApp yet. <laughs> let me because I want to hear more. Uh, <laughs> Jennifer, you had a question. Yeah, uh, not a question. Okay. I just wanted to say something. Now he was talking about stereotype and he was talking about label. I think. Um, We've gotten to the point where everyone has become so self-absorbed and it is now a case of tit for tat. You call me this, I call you that. I have a problem with this. It's like um, saying, oh, the Yorubas are this, the Aosas are this. Um, and then a lot of people lack imagination. They fail to immerse themselves in the experience of others. Now, the fact that I wasn't there shouldn't stop me from trying to picture what you had to go through in a particular situation. It also shouldn't stop me to think that, oh, because you have called Uwa um, a paper, doesn't necessarily mean that she's actually a paper. It just means that you had a different experience with Uwa. Mm -hmm. She has a whole other side of her. So everybody has like a different side to them. What you experience with me is totally different from Mm. Um, was experienced with me and I feel like that's what people should start looking at so how do we get yeah. there <laughs> because <laughs> this danger of the single story that you talked about is I think is what is plaguing us in Nigeria honestly wow. there are lots of single stories out there where people do not even want to hear the other side or experience the other side well the most foolish thing anyone can do is inherit another person's enemy mm. um, until you have actually experienced something and you can't actually um, decide on an impression of a group of people on the experience of one or two but here is where we have a problem in Nigeria most people don't understand that we've become incredibly interwoven um, I'm from Ondo state my wife is from Edo um, I am from, I have friends who are from the north. I used to go to Joss just to play basketball with Steve Gukas. Wow. Steve Gukas is from Joss. He was my best man when I married. We are so interconnected yeah. that we fail to understand that if this country becomes dislocated, what do you do with your child? Mm -hmm. What do you do with your aunt? What do you, so it's, it's really a, a problem that's born out of ignorance. Mm -hmm. And I think the social media, uh, the biggest problem we've got mm. is that the social media is fostering not only miscommunication, it's fostering discommunication. Mm. There is a way in which I can hide behind the keyboard and I can, I can hide behind the keyboard mm. and simply, you know, type out knee-jerk responses Absolutely. to things uh, and that comes from having followers mm. and deciding that I have a responsibility to Ooh, respond to everything yeah. and that's really where I think the discipline mm. is lacking and it's not just you know I, I'm not just talking about a generational issue I, I'm talking about um, a, a discipline issue because there are just there are also older people who simply lash back on social media based on their prejudices and biases. Mm. And that's really where I think, uh, I talk about all of this because it's also a very important space for our storytellers mm. to begin to um, engage us. There are so many stories to be told, not just about tribes, but about the failures in government. Mm. Don't, don't talk about it on social media. Write stories about bad roads. Write stories about unfinished bridges. Write stories about, about corruption. You know, Write stories about those civil servants themselves who teach the politicians mm. where the bodies are buried. Mm -hmm. There are just so many layers mm. to the Nigerian problem Absolutely. that it's, it's not just, it's not about tribe. There is this um, ad I listened to on... Um, on um, Radio Now, 93.5. I love it. Uh, it. It says, I'll tell you a crime, you tell me the tribe 
mm. of, 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 you know, mm. of the perpetrator. Yes. And it gets to the end, it says, well, if you, if you thought about a tribe, then you are part of the problem okay. because there are no tribes. To that, corruption. No, there are people who mm. commit crimes mm. and they're called criminals. Yeah. Mm. They don't have a tribe. Right. Absolutely. And, and I think that's really why I think this um, conversation is so important. Absolutely. That, that, you know, we're telling stories about those crimes we don't want to happen. We're telling stories about, you know, characters that we've profiled that represent those people that are bad amongst us. But they're not represented as tribes. They have to be represented as criminals, as yeah. people. Yeah. Um, that, I think, is really it. We have to also uh, foreshadow. In storytelling, what you talked about, Barack Obama, um, a black president being foreshadowed, yeah. uh, uh, I think the series was, 20, was 24. 24, yes. Um, but, but there were also series that foreshadowed a female president right before um, um, Hillary Clinton almost mm -hmm. became president. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are series that foreshadow, uh, foreshadowed uh, black police officers as police chiefs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that became Maybe the reality yeah. in America. Yeah. What future are our stories okay. foreshadowing? That should be what we need so, to be talking about. <laughs> this brings me to my next question, because most times when I hear movie makers, now I'm going to the movie side now, mm -hmm. filmmakers saying that, oh, na that Nigerians like, and I think it's a very wrong narrative, that we like feel-good stories. So you see them create movies, you go to, I can't go to the cinema to watch certain movies, I'm sorry. You know, there are some movies that, that do not deserve my time. If you are not, if there's nothing that, that at the end of the day I can hold on to say, you know what, this is a good story to tell, then there's no point. I don't feel like laughing because we're not in a place to laugh. But I see a lot of filmmakers say that, oh, Nigerians like feel-good movies and all of that. And you see, oh, big movies going out in the cinema and it's just, oh, just come and laugh and go. Well, I would answer it in two ways. <laughs> I will answer it by saying... Yes, Nigerians do like feel good mm -hmm. stuff. Remember, we were voted one of the happiest people on earth. Not so. And <laughs> Suffering and smiling. <laughs> it's important for, 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 for us to recognize that because it's also a coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. There is a way in which our movies help the mass of our people to sort of suspend reality for a brief moment, <laughs> forget about the problems, and just laugh. Mm. That there's, a, there's a place for, for that. that. But I also think there is a place for our filmmakers to embrace their power. Their power is that they have an audience who listens to them, mm. who, who hear what they have to say, who pay Nigerian audiences like Nigerian movies. Mm. That's an advantage. Yeah. The question is, do the filmmaker want to embrace Nigerian their stories. power? Their power is in creating stories that create characters that, that deliver heroic outcomes. Uh, their power is in exposing the rot, the, the spaces, and the ways in which corruption has, has, has debarred our progress. Mm. Their power is in exposing the things that we could be doing in innovation, in, in imagination, Absolutely. in science, in technology. We have all these yeah. beautiful, brilliant, young that. people, all of this. <laughs> we can foreshadow. Yes. The question is, can, can those two realities coexist? My yes. answer is yes. We can create feel-good movies with heroes that leave us with insight, mm. that, that get us excited to be Nigerians, to, to, to fight for a different reality Absolutely. and a different future. Um, it, it needn't be one or the other. Mm. And so for me, again, I started off by saying, um, our stories are only as rich as our storytellers, story which is why, for me, the focus I have, I have what I've focused on mm. in the last few years is, is in mentoring and working with young storytellers, mm. and not just to know how to run a camera or, or how to hold a boom or how to light, but how to embrace their power. Mm. Because unless you embrace your power as a storyteller. You don't see your possibilities in terms of being influential. Mm. Influential 
in impressing on people a new future, mm. but influential in the conversations of nation building. Mm. I mean, we're referring now to, to Kunle Afolayo's film. Yeah. And I think he's a magnificent storyteller. Story he and, and within his films... You can see it. I would watch but, a film any day, any time. Within his films, there Citation. are, are feel-good yes. moments. Yes. But there are always stuff strong messages that let you see how rich culturally mm. he is mm. as a filmmaker. Yes. And that's not a surprise. He, 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 he worked for many years as an actor. Mm -hmm. He worked with Tunde Kelani. Oh, yeah. And, and can you watch any Tunde Kelani that's film Mirage was that, Tunde does, that does movie. not speak mm -hmm. to his power Absolutely. as a filmmaker. And that, to me, is where it's at. Mm. Um, the filmmaker needs to feed. You cannot pour out of an empty cup. Mm. Uh, if you have filmmakers or storytellers who don't read, who don't watch other people's films, who don't travel, who don't really, you know, don't know any other language, but, you know, the, 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 the pidgin variant they speak on Twitter, you've got an issue. <laughs> So whatever stories they choose to tell <laughs> will end up in the limits of their experiences. Absolutely. And so I encourage as many people as possible who are doing things right and who are doing the right thing, adopt as many of these storytellers as you can. Mm. What is not in doubt is that we are blessed with a lot of talented Absolutely. storytellers. Absolutely. Sure, sure. Jennifer, okay, quickly, what's up? We've run out of time. Oh, my God. <laughs> We thought we had an hour. Happily <laughs> put, that's you. Okay, so um, we have a message from Benson. He said, "Happily put is the power of the story that builds the heroes. I wonder what heroic stories are told today in our nursery and primary schools today. Are these aspects embedded in the primary curriculum? Okay, you have to quickly answer that. Well said. <laughs> It does not require an answer. This is an insightful yeah, comment. Yeah. There is a, a failure uh, in our educational system mm -hmm. as well where we have not actually um, introduced you know, the history of Nigeria, the multiplicity of our ethnicity. The, 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 I mean, when, when I was growing up, you were forced to read Dio Fagua. Yes. You, you learned a lot about your history. culture, yeah. your history. They told you about what you know, your name meant. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you were forced to spell it the right way, mm -hmm. not hola with H and all of that <laughs> stuff that you see online. <laughs> but these are not the fault of our, our, our young people. It's the fault of our institutional systems. Um, so yes, we have to go back to stories from when they're young. Mm. Um, we have to have parents, yeah. parenting, uh, connecting with these kids, telling them stories of their family experiences. Yeah. There is a dislocation there mm. that is also affecting the stories the kids are embracing. Um, for every family where the, the house girl and the steward are doing the parenting, mm. uh, there's a dislocation in the stories that the, the child embraces. Yeah. Sure. And for a lot of us, some of these house girls are from Republic of Benin. Benin. The stories they tell our kids are at variance with the heritage of our kids. Mm. So there is a, a lot of spaces where we can go, mm. where it's not just the film industry alone. or the TV industry alone. Mm. There is a whole confluence mm. of things. All of us are storytellers. Our parents were storytellers. We are storytellers. We are storytellers in, in friendships, in marriages. In, and, and the reason why you have so many dislocated friendships, um, distrust amongst people, uh, is simply because the stories are not aligning. And, and, and so he is totally right, and, and I'm glad he's brought that up. <sighs> Thank you, Ben. Can we beg you to come <laughs> back again? <laughs> I, like, I can't have... This, this, this one hour is so painful, honestly. I will tell my story of how pained I am. Yeah. You know, that we have run out of time and we've come to the end of the show. But thank you so much. Thank you. Honestly speaking, this has been one of the most insightful shows that I, I am honored to have hosted <laughs> this night. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. It's been an amazing conversation. And I really hope people listened you know, because you said too many things. Yeah. I wish people are listening and they are able to take on those things. I mean, so the stories goes beyond just what we see on TV. What are the stories that we're telling ourselves? ourselves. You know, we can truly build this nation. We can rebuild again. Because our nation, you know, yeah, 
a lot of things have gone wrong, but we can start from somewhere and we can begin to tell the right narrative. Thank you so much for Thank everything. you. Jennifer, thank you for doing this with me. <laughs> All right, so Waze was birthed from the need to inform, inspire, influence lives towards action. And this year, we started our series, our focus on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. So if you are a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. And if you're a job seeker, keep watching Waze and follow us on all our social media handles, as this will be an all-year-round engagement. So tell your friends to keep all eyes on Waze. In case you missed today's quote, it's a very short but very powerful quote. It says, storytelling is the most powerful way to put ideas into the world. I mean, so we have to start telling the right stories and we have to start shadowing. What do you call it again? Foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. <laughs> so for, the, for the Nigeria that we want. I love that. What you said, Nigeria that we want. We need to start telling the right stories. So we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. Enjoy.